So it's sort of a sociological look at the inside and the outside of fame. It's wonderful. Uh, there is, however, one small favor that I'd like to ask of you. <laughs> Name it, anything. Nonfiction called uh, called Fame, and it's about uh, it's about fame. It's about uh, fame uh, from the inside of it, and also theories on. It, it loosely follows the life cycle of fame, the beginning. The beginning, the love, the hate, the equilibrium, where everybody just knows you're famous, then the slide when it starts slipping away, but maybe only you notice, and then the descent where it's like sand through the fingertips, um, and then the without, and can you ever really be without, or is it like a lobster trap? Um, so it loosely follows that structure, and it's uh, just a very visceral um, sort of stream of consciousness account of, of the experience inside of it for me uh, from when I was very famous. Um, and then also the descent when the fame was breaking away, and it's it's, you know, and I know from the outside it sounds like, oh, oh, you know, poor me, you know, to anyone who's saying, who's going through a hard time when fame's slipping away, but really it's a, it's a reality, it's, a, it's an imposed reality that you, that becomes a real reality that then suddenly is sheared away. Mm -hmm. So it's that experience. So it goes into that and theories on why the public treats why the public um, endows people with this fame? Because it's a it's made up. So why did society make this up, and why do they endow it to people? And then uh, why do they treat uh, the famous in particular ways at those different stages in the life cycle? Why are they so angry when the fame starts to slip away for someone? And so there's all these theories that I have in there too about <laughs> why they behave that way. So it's sort of a sociological look at the inside and the outside of fame. It's kind of fascinating. That's why I started writing it. When I was um, uh, a sophomore at UCLA, I just uh, graduated this past June, um, I started, I was really thinking about the, this ephemeral element of fame. Why, why the temperature, the emotional temperature in a room will change on a dime when a famous person walks in. Why people will divest themselves of their own sense of self-worth when they're standing in front of somebody famous, when they suddenly become, uh, uh, you know, they can't talk, or, like, what's that about? So that's why I started this sort of um, investigation and con yeah. contemplation. Yeah. I think the biggest difference is that you don't really have a complete sense of yourself yet. So you don't have a complete sense of yourself yet, and I, I do talk about this in the book. So you coming, you arriving at who you really are has to happen at the same time you're dealing with all this fame. And so for a lot of people it can get folded in with it and it can become very confusing. Whereas if you're 35, like you said, and you become famous, you hopefully have a really good sense of who you are. And so the fame or the way you're treated as a famous person isn't going to sort of weave itself into you as strongly. Though you can still have issues with it, but... And, you know, most people, they become famous younger and not, not, not when yeah. they're 35, so it's uh, more common to have it woven in, you know, or have it confuse you, at least, about who, who you are, you know. Yeah.